Our world is filled with lots of colourful objects, so let's explore colours in more detail. Why do we see things a particular colour? What makes up black and white? And can things change colour? There's lots of cool colour experiments that we've included in this video. So as I go through the list of equipment that you might want to find, we're going to do it in order of each activity so you can decide which activity you'd like to do or do all of them. For investigating our primary and secondary colours, I've got a test tube wrapped with some test tubes, but you don't have to have equipment like this. We've just got clear tubes that we can see the colours through. You can use glasses just as easily and pour from one to the other to do this experiment. And we'll need food colouring for this experiment too. For the kaleidoscope milk experiment, you're going to need a tray to put the milk in. Some milk, so we've got semi skim today. If you can get hold of full fat milk, that works a little bit better. Um, we're going to use some fairy liquid, so a little bit of soap and some cotton buds just to dab it in, and a bit of food colouring. So we've got powdered food colouring that we've used here today in the primary colours, so red, yellow and blue if possible. For the colour spinning top experiment, you're going to need to print out the template. It's best printed on a piece of card. If you've not got a card, you can layer up a few pieces of paper and stick them together, and some pens to colour them in. You're going to need a cocktail stick and a bit of blue tack. For the chromatography experiment, you're going to need to investigate different coloured pen inks. So black's a really good colour to start with. Do make sure that all the inks you use are washable inks, uh, so that they are soluble in water. You're going to need a bit of filter paper to do this experiment. So this is a coffee filter paper, which will work perfectly fine if you've got some filter paper that looks like this, or blotting paper that you use for arts and crafts, that would work perfectly fine as well. Failing any of those things, you can use a bit of kitchen towel and you're going to need to use something to drop water on or a tray to hang it from. So if you've got a pipette, something like this, that'd be great. Otherwise you can use a straw to pipette it on, or you can make a little hanger like this here. So here we've just taken a, a little container and with elastic band, some pencils on the side, I've made like a little washing line effect, and then we can use some paper clips to hang it from. For the red cabbage indicator experiment, you can use the glass equipment again, and you're going to need a red cabbage. I use mine today and have already chopped it up. You're going to need a couple of liquids from the house to test, such as vinegar or lemon juice, uh, and a little bit of bicarbonate of soda and some water. If you'd like to have a go at making your own torchlight picture, this is the equipment you're going to need. Some black card, permanent markers, black one for the outline, and all the colours to do some colouring in, a template or a picture you'd like to trace, and a plastic envelope. I do enjoy rainbow colours, so let's have a go at colour mixing and see if we can make all of these combinations. These glasses have water with some food colouring inside to make red, yellow and blue the three primary colours. If we take our first two colours, red and yellow, we can get our orange. If we take yellow and blue, we can create green. And if we take blue and red, we've got a purple. By adding different combinations of our primary colours, we've now made three different secondary colours, orange, green and purple. If we then mix secondary colours together, we end up with tertiary colours. We might end up with a murkier brown or black. Another way we can mix our primary colours together is to actually use an effect called capillary action. And capillary action is what plants use for water to get soaked up through the stem and feed the plant. So here we've got our three primary colours and some empty tubes. And we're going to connect them with a bit of kitchen towel. So we'll fold up and roll up some kitchen towel. So we've put an empty tube between the red and the yellow and we've just placed a piece of kitchen towel between the two. We're then going to connect up the yellow tube and the red tube together by adding a piece of kitchen towel from the yellow tube into an empty one. And then we're going to put another empty one between the yellow and the blue and connect that up in a similar way 
And another bit of kitchen towel between the blue and the empty tube between the yellow and the blue. Capillary action works where the water molecules are using surface tension. And that's to do with the fact that the water doesn't like to break apart. The molecules like to stick together. And in fact, in this experiment, it's working against gravity. The water gets absorbed through the kitchen towel and we should see the level of liquid increase at the bottom. We're going to leave it for a couple of hours and come back to it later. In this experiment, we're going to mix up those primary colours using the power of milk and soap. So here we've poured out some milk into our dish and I've left it for just long enough for any bubbles to pop and for it to be completely still. And we're going to add a little bit of food colouring. So we're using powder form and I'm literally just going to put a couple of different patches of colour across a few areas. Next we're going to use soap. And we're going to just dip in an end of the cotton bud into soap. You could use a cocktail stick or you could even just dip the end of your finger. And we're going to very carefully touch the surface and have a look what happens when we do. Wow. So you can see very quickly those colours are being dispersed. But underneath something unusual is happening. And this is happening because the soap is a detergent and the milk has fat inside. And detergents and fat kind of work against each other. So the detergent wants to enclose and encase all those little globules of fat inside of the milk. So the higher the fat content in our milk, the more exaggerated this experiment becomes. But you can see as the soap breaks the surface tension of the milk and starts to push molecules away as it's trying to get hold of fat, the colour's getting taken with it. So we start to see a really interesting pattern here. If we try to dip somewhere else in the tray, it doesn't have the same effect. And that's because there's already soap in the dish that's breaking that surface tension. This kaleidoscope milk experiment not only shows us an interesting way of those primary colours mixing into secondary colours, but it also demonstrates how detergents work. When the soap touches the surface of the milk, it disrupts the surface tension and lowers it. The soap also tries to surround the fat molecules in the milk and this causes some of the molecules to push away. And it's this reaction between the detergent and the oils and fats that helps us do the washing up by lifting off the dirt. Mm. Hello there, you caught me drinking my green tea. Well, my cup's green at least anyway. And what is it that makes this cup green and not purple or blue or any other colour? Well, it's all to do with science. Isaac Newton discovered that if you take visible light and you pass it through a prism, you can split it up into all the rainbow colours. And each of those rainbow colours is its very own wavelength of light. He also found out that for every colour that we see, the light is either absorbed or reflected back. So in this case, all of those wavelengths coming from the visible light are being absorbed apart from green and the green light gets reflected back, which is why we see this mug green and this mug red. All of the colours here have been absorbed apart from the red, which is reflected back. So whether the mug is green or red, it's all to do with the light being absorbed or reflected. And Isaac Newton illustrated this by combining all the colours of light together and creating white. This is called a Newton's colour wheel. Now, as you can see, it's got all of the rainbow colours on the wheel. And we've got a little cog system on the back. So when we turn the handle and we spin it fast enough... We can see that the colours blur and merge together, making it look like white. Or maybe a little bit greyish. This is happening because this colour wheel is moving so fast, our eyes can't separate the individual colours, it's just moving too quickly. Isaac Newton illustrated this idea with a colour wheel. 
and he experimented with different filters. So if you look for a particular colour filter, it blocks out other colours. Using this science, we can have a go at making our own colour wheels that blur. You don't even need colours, you can do it with black and white, white and see how the stripes blur. So with this particular spinning top, we can see we get an interesting pattern emerging and some bits are blurring into grey. With this spinning top, we've got the three primary colours, red, yellow and blue. And when we spin them together, we start to see some of the colours merging here. And again, we've got the primary colours here, but with this one, we've got blue and yellow in a circle, yellow and red in a circle and red and blue in a circle. And when we spin this one, we should hopefully start to see secondary colours. So this has to spin at a fast enough speed that our eyes can't keep track of the movements so that the colours end up blurring. Now these are wooden spinning tops and we're going to have a go at making a simpler one today. So for this experiment you will need to download and print the paper templates or you can have a go at making your own. Printed on Packard is best. And we're going to colour them in. So I've started with this template and I've coloured them in the three primary colours. I'm going to take a bit of blue, blue tack, it's about a marble size, and I'm going to break it in half. I'm going to put a little blue tack in the centre at the top and at the bottom so that it's sandwiched between the two layers. And I'm going to push the cocktail stick through. So I'm being careful not to poke my fingers out the other side of the blue tack. I don't want to push it very far. It only wants to stay a little way through, so it's about a centimetre through the bottom there with the blue tack firmly pressed down at either side. And then I can give it a spin. And there we have a colour spinning top where the colours are blurring. Now with this particular spinning top, we've got all primary colours in both circles. But if you were to do a template more like this one, you can see the primary colours have been mixed in a different way. There's not every colour in every circle. So the outer circle has blue and yellow, so they will merge together and blend in colour and they will give us, see if you can guess, green. The middle circle then has red and yellow and those two colours will merge together to give us orange. And the smallest inner circle has blue and red and they will merge together to give us purple. So this is a cool way you can make a spinning top. Have a go with lots of different colours, add in all the rainbow colours and see if you can make white like the Newton wheel and try black and white patterns and see what happens with those. Let's have a look at chromatography next. Chromatography is all about splitting mixtures up into different components. In this example, we're going to split up black ink. So I'm going to take a little bit of filter paper and I'm going to draw a basic shape in the middle. So I'm choosing to draw a star today, but you could choose any shape you like. Nice and simple in the middle. The key here is to make sure there's an area in the centre that has no ink. And what we're going to do is we're going to add water into the centre. And as it gets absorbed by the filter paper, it's going to start to travel towards the edges where it's dry. And as it travels, it's going to drag the ink with it. Now, in this particular example of chromatography, we have a mobile phase and a stationary phase. The stationary phase is the paper and the mobile phase is the water. And this is why we need water soluble ink so that the ink can actually travel with the water. Some of the components of the ink will have a higher affinity, so it means it will like sticking to the paper more and others will like to travel with the water more. And it's usually to do with the sizes of the molecules. So if it's a smaller molecule, it's going to travel further away. If it's a larger molecule, it's going to travel a shorter distance. So this is where we want to use a pipette like this pipette here. So you squeeze the end, put it into the water, let go and it will suck the water up. But if you haven't got a pipette, you can use a straw and you use a straw in a similar way. You can use air pressure with this straw. So you push the straw into the water, cover the end of the straw with your finger and there'll be enough air pressure in there to hold just a little water droplet or two. So we can then drop our water droplet into the middle of the paper. And as it absorbs, we'll start to see 
any colours that are inside of that black ink spreading out. And we can keep adding water to the same spot in the centre and as we add it those water molecules are going to allow the ink to travel further again. So this black ink has quite a lot of red inside, there's a reasonable amount of blue and a couple of the edges we can actually see a tiny bit of yellow there as well. If you do have a larger piece of filter paper, it'd be really good to test out lots of different pens at the same time. So I'm going to cut the filter paper into strips. I'm going to test out four different black inks and I've drawn a line in that ink across the bottom of the filter paper, but I've left a gap away from the bottom there for the water to start to travel up the filter paper. So I know which ink is which of my filter paper and I'm going to use the little washing line to hold those pieces of paper in place. So this washing line is just a little Tupperware with a couple of pencils, elastic banding and a bit of string across the top of the pencils. And I'm going to put the strip of filter paper in place on the washing line. Now I've got the filter paper in place, I'm going to carefully pour water into the bottom of my tray, just enough to touch the bottom ends of the filter paper. And we want that water just to be absorbed from the bottoms so it can take the colour with it and not go down into the water. So let's take a look what's happening. The filter paper has been left for five minutes now to absorb as much water as it can and as the water has travelled up the filter paper it's taking that colour with it. Now you can see over here with these two particular inks they haven't travelled or separated at all. You can still see the black line at the base there and that's what happens when we don't use water soluble inks. So this is a dry white pen and a permanent marker so they don't dissolve in the water and all of those molecules are going to stay on the stationary phase stuck to the piece of paper whereas these two inks are water soluble and we can see that the pigments that they're made up of have been separated blue's traveled quite a long way we're seeing more of the yellow now and the red has traveled a reasonable distance don't stick with black ink though, do test out lots of other types of inks because many of them are made up of multiple pigments and you'll be able to separate them out like you can see here. We can mix colours together to make new ones but what about changing colours then? Some chemical reactions can actually allow this to happen and they can start one colour and end a different colour. So this is what we're going to explore next. For this experiment we're going to be using red cabbage juice. So you'll need to get an adult to help you prepare this liquid. They'll need to cut up the red cabbage and if you want to eat the cabbage then all you have to do is boil it up like you normally would do, eat the cabbage but keep the liquid that the cabbage is strained from. That's the liquid that you want. Do make sure it's cool enough to touch. If you don't want to boil the cabbage up you can literally just put the red cabbage in a blender with some water and strain out the cabbage so that you're left with the liquid to use. Once you've prepared your red cabbage juice you can actually pour it into ice cube trays and freeze it so that you can do this experiment whenever you like and that's what we've done. So here's my red cabbage ice cubes and I'm going to put one of my red cabbage ice cubes into some warm water and wait for them to defrost. My ice cubes have now dissolved and my red cabbage juice is ready and you'll notice it's quite a bluey purple colour and this colour has also got special chemicals inside called anthocyanins and that's what we've extracted from the red cabbage. And it's anthocyanin that's going to do some cool colour changing for us today. 
I'm going to leave this white card as a background so that you can see the colour changes a little bit more easily. We're going to experiment with a couple of other household chemicals. So here we've got some lemon juice. And as we add lemon juice to our red cabbage juice, you can notice a colour change. This pink colour has occurred because lemon juice is in fact acidic and a chemical reaction has happened between the chemicals in the lemon juice and the anthocyanins in the red cabbage juice. We call a chemical that can change colour in this manner an indicator and this is now indicated to us that an acid is present. Let's have a look at something else we can find in our kitchen cupboards. So here's a little bit of bicarbonate soda that we use in baking. So I'm going to put about half a teaspoon into a little beaker, or a little pot, and pop a bit of water in just to dissolve it. So I'm going to give that a little stir. And now we're going to pour it into the end one with the cabbage juice. Keep an eye on the colour. Ooh. So we've noticed this one has gone more blue. The anthocyanins have now reacted with the bicarbonate of soda and it's indicating to us that we now have an opposite chemical to an acid, which is called an alkaline. Now what's interesting with this experiment is we can actually reverse the colours and head back towards our original purple. So if we pour lemon juice into our alkaline liquid, we can make it go back to being purple. And if we add bicarbonate of soda into our lemon juice, we get a cool bubbly reaction, but we can also make that go back to purple. Acids and alkalines exist in our homes and lots of other forms, but some of them can be a bit more dangerous than others. So before you go investigating lots of different chemicals in your household, please ask for parents' permission about what is safe and what isn't. Other things you could test in your homes could be vinegar or soap, or if you've got powdered laundry detergent, you could use a very small amount of powdered laundry detergent. Just be careful when you're handling it. This is a rough pH scale that we've worked out using acids and alkalines. So things that are more pink and red or more acidic, if we're nearer the purple colour that we started with, then we're neutral. And if we're going more blue or green or even to the point of yellow, then we're getting much more alkaline. So you can see if you can make rainbow colours with different liquids in your home. All these fabulous colours that we've seen are because the wavelengths of light are being absorbed by the materials except for the one that's being reflected back. Now, what's unusual is when we look at black and white objects. So a black object absorbs all of those wavelengths of light, whereas a white object reflects all of them back. And there's a pretty cool way that we can use this to make an optical effect. I'd like to show you a special book that I found, and this is called a torch book. And a torch book has some nice illustrations on one page, and the other page, it looks quite dark. And it uses this effect of absorbing light with black paper behind, but then we can reveal the picture with a torch. And this torch has got a white piece of paper at the end of it. So when we put the torch behind the picture, but in front of the black, we can see the light is being reflected rather than absorbed and it reveals our picture in more detail. If you'd like to have a go at making your own torchlight picture, you can use our template to draw around or if you have a picture you'd like to try, you just want to find one that's easy to trace. So we're going to take the picture and we're going to put it inside of our plastic wallet like this. When it's tucked inside, we're going to trace around the picture with a black permanent marker, like this. As soon as you've traced it around, you can see it's now stuck onto the plastic and we can add some colour and we can make it nice and bright and colourful. Now what we want to do is to remove the white background. So we're going to take our black bit of paper or card and slide that into the envelope on top of the white paper. 
Now we can see our picture is a bit more hidden. To make it revealed with the torch light, we need to make ourselves a torch. If you have a little bit of black card left, you can draw a shape that you want to be your torch shape and cut it out and then stick a little bit of white paper over the end to be your torch light. Or if you've only got white paper, then you can draw a circle at the end and colour the rest in black. Either one is fine. We've added a lollipop stick to the end just to make it a bit stronger and make it reach the edges of the picture. Let's see if it works. Ah, oh, lovely. Here we go. So our torchlight is now revealing our picture. You could follow this design or make any other design that you like. We found an underwater scene looks really nicely, but maybe you could try a space scene or something different. Back to our capillary action experiment. This has been sat there for the last two hours working really nicely, waiting for all the liquid to get drawn up through the cloth and then it drops down into the empty test tubes. So those empty test tubes are no longer empty and we can see the other liquid levels have gone down quite a lot. The yellow, the most amount because it's being drawn up from one source into both the orange and the green test tubes. So this is another way that we can investigate those secondary colours mixing. I think it looks pretty cool too. Discover more with Nitrogen and her Technicoloured lab coat.